Hey YouTube, welcome to the next episode on solving trig. So before I get started with the next bit, I'm just going to do a quick recap of what we did in the last episode. So at a very basic level, how do we solve trig equations? Well, the first thing is once we have rearranged for sine, cos or tan, we do the inverse. That's known as the primary value. Then we very simply apply some rules to find the secondary value. If you're dealing with sine, you do 180 minus. For cosine, you do 360 minus and tan 180 plus. They're very simple to remember. If you do enough practice, you won't have to worry about consciously remembering them. It'll just be second, second nature. Now, once you've done the PV and SV, remember the graph cycle every 360. So all you do is you add or subtract 360 from your PV and SV, not the other way around, to find other values in the range. Now, what are we going to do today? We're going to deal with situations where the angle is not just x. So last episode, we dealt with sine x, cos x, tan x. What about if the angle was in the form of ax plus b? This means that the range we are solving for is different to the angle we're dealing with. And this can easily be rectified by modifying the range. Now, if you go back two episodes ago when I did sketching trig equations, we dealt with tan of x minus 45 or something similar to that. And I told you that a very simple way to sketch that is to modify the range and draw the tan graph within the modified range and then do the transformation so you don't draw too much. Same thing applies when solving. So here it says find all the values of x between 0 and 360 such that sine 3x is 0 0.87. Leave your final answers correct to one decimal place. So we notice that the range angle is x, but here we're dealing with 3x. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify the range so that it reflects the angle in question. So we're going to times everything by 3. Timesing everything by 3, we get 1,080. Now by doing this, what we're essentially doing is we know the sine 3x graph is three sine graphs within the same domain between 0 and 360. We're stretching it, we're pulling it up to 1,080, so that then we can apply the simple PV, SV rules, and 360, etc. You can't do it when the graph is squashed. So now we can do it. We can say, look, 3x is the inverse sine of 0 0.87. And I'm going to show you guys a cool trick that allows us to save answers so we keep our answers as accurate as possible. So we're going to do inverse sine of 0 0.87. And we get 60.45. And we can clearly see that's in the range. Now we're going to have to divide this by 3 later, not yet. So I'm going to store this. Can you see? Here we have this STO button. See where I'm clicking here? Now that's like a save button. You can save this number as something. So you press STO and can you see at the top is this button that or this symbol that came active. Now you can click any button with A, B, C, D, E, F on it. I do STO and then I just click the button above it. It stores the number as A. So I'm going to write this down. My PV of, so what I do is I write 60.4 dot 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 PV and I've stored that as A. Now for sine, how do you work out the secondary value? You do 180, take away your primary. So here in our calculator, we're going to do 180 minus the answer, which is in the range. Then we're going to STO something else. Yeah, I'm going to use B. So we have 119.5 dot dot dot. That is our SV. We're storing that as B. Now both of these are in the range. So we can start thinking about adding 360. So this saves you a lot of time. We're just going to do A plus 360 and we're going to do B plus 360. Now whatever this is, I'm going to store as C. Whatever this is, I'm going to store as D. So I'm kind of predicting what's happening here. So we do alpha. So you press the alpha button now. And then you see this little A comes up at the top. We do alpha A plus 360. Then we're going to store that as C. So we have 420 point dot dot dot. Then we're going to do B, alpha, B plus 360. Then we're going to store that as D, 479.5 dot dot dot. Then we have to think, look, these are in the range. Can we keep going? Can you add 360 to these and still be within the range? My calculator is covering it, but the upper side was 1080. And the answer is yes. We can take C, add 360, and D, and add 360. Whatever this is, A, B, C, D, I'm going to store that as E and then F. 
So this is why it's really important we store. It's just gonna save. It's just gonna save you some time. Yeah. And once you get quicker at this, it's gonna save you a lot of time. Then we're going to do alpha d plus three sixty. And then we're going to store that as f. Then finally, you can think, can I add 360 again? You can try it, but the answer is no. These are all the values in our modified range. So now, the last thing we need to do is divide all those numbers by 3. And this is where you really save some time. So we're going to do A divided by 3, and we're going to round it to one decimal place. So we've got 20.1. Then I'm going to do B. You just go ahead and just change the letters. And I'm going to do it for all the rest. And finally, we get to F divided by 3. And that gives us 279.8. And if I remove the calculator now, you can see that all the previous answers were within the modified range, but all my final answers after dividing by 3 are between 0 and 360. Okay, so you've learned the storing method. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're new here and you want more maths content, then please consider subscribing. If you're learning something, then hit that like button and comment down below to let me know what you want to learn next. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Find all values of x between this range for this function. Leave your final answer to one decimal place. So, step one is we need to rearrange for tan. Instead of writing the angle, guys, I'm just going to say this. So I'm going to make this positive and the four can come to the other side. So you have 1 minus 4 is minus 3, and then this has become positive now. So tan of the angle, I'm going to write it now, tan of the angle is minus 3 over 2. Now we identify that the angle is different to the one in question. So we just need to slowly modify it. As you lot get better, you can do this really quickly. I'll, I'll tell you how you do it really quickly in a second. But they have 2x minus 30. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to times by 2 for our modified range. That will take us to 720, and then we're going to minus 30. So we get minus 30, 2x minus 30, and we have 690. The quick way of doing it is you take the endpoints 0 and 360, and you just sub it in. So 0, when you sub into here, you get minus 30. When you sub in 360, you get 690. So that's the quick way of working out the endpoints for the modified range. So what we're going to do next is we're going to do inverse tan of our minus 3 over 2, and that's our primary value. I'm just going to write that first primary value, and I'm going to store that as a. Now remember, store that as a. Now you might be thinking, that's not in the range. It's not. It's not even in, it's not even in the uh, first range, but remember, we're looking at the modified range. So make a note, that is not in the range. I've still stored it as a, though, because how do we work out the secondary value for tan? We do 180 plus the primary value. So I'm going to do 180 plus this. And don't forget to store this. Because that actually is in the modified range. So we have 1, 2, 3.6 dot dot dot. That's our SV. We've stored it as B. Now we think the upper value is 690. You can just about see on screen. We're going to add 360 to both numbers. We're going to take A and add 360. We're going to do B. We're going to add 360. So even though the primary value was not in range, doesn't matter. We're still going to use it to work out the other values in the range. Store that as C, which I need to do. Let's not forget that. So let's store that as C. Then we need to do B plus 360. Let's store that as D. Then again, you think, can I add 360? Well, to C, we actually can. We can to C, but we can't to D. If you add 360 to that, it's going to be way too big. So we can take C and add 360. And there you go. We'll store that as E. All right. Now, the last thing we need to do is we need to unmodify the range. I'm going to show you what we're going to do in the calculator. So, for example, remember all of these values equal 2x minus 30. So we need to unmodify all of these four values, right? So you have 2x minus 30 equals b. So you add 30, and then you divide by 2. So this is what I'm going to type in the calculator. And then without really changing anything, you just change b to c to d to e. So I'll show you the first one, and we're going to round it. 
So you've got 78, 76.8. And now I'm going to do it for the rest. And finally, doing it for E, changing D to E, we get 346.8. And you can see these are now in the original range. So that's it. That's how we deal with solving trig where the angle is not just x. So let's do our quick summary again. So we can add one more thing. So when we solve trig equations, we follow these rules in order. Once we rearrange for our given function, like we did in the previous example, we rearrange for tan, we modify the range if necessary. Then we apply the inverse of either sine cos or tan, we call this the primary value. To find the secondary value, if you're dealing with sine, it's 180 minus, for cosine 360 minus and tan 180 plus. Then once we've done that, we just add and minus 360 to find other values in the given range. And that's really it. And if you have modified the range, then you just need to unmodify the range as well. So that's it. Very simple, guys. If you learned something, please hit that like button and make sure you subscribe for more maths content because in the next video, I'm going to be looking at the final part of trig, which is quadratic equations. So I look forward to it. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Peace.